guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It's that time of the week again. It's Premier League predictions time. Another round of Premier League fixtures is almost upon us. And this is, of course, the video where we go through each and every single game we played out this weekend. Talk about the games, analyse the games, and, of course, give predictions on how I think the games will end up. Before we get into all of that, though, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always very greatly appreciated. And, of course, I encourage you lot to get involved in the comments section. Give me your thoughts, comments, opinions, but most of all, of course, your predictions on how you think each and every single Premier League game will finish this weekend. I'd love to hear from you all. I'm sure all of your predictions will make for great and interesting reading down below, so do get involved down there. But without further ado, let's get on with the predictions. First up, no lunchtime kickoff this week, so we're diving straight into the three o'clockers on Saturday afternoon. And first and foremost, we're at the Emirates Stadium for Arsenal hosting Wolverhampton Wanderers. Big game this one for an Arsenal side that are coming into this game in top form, top of the table, and are a point clear of second place Manchester City and are looking to remain that way. With a win against Wolves this weekend after coming into this game on the back of a 1-0 win against Brentford last weekend. You've of course got Wolves who are looking for revenge after their controversial 3-2 defeat to another London club in Fulham on Monday night. Big game this one. An interesting one as well because Wolves have been playing very well across this season. They haven't exactly got the points to show for it and some of that is down to some dodgy VAR calls and some dodgy refereeing decisions. Another part of that is, of course, their poor finishing. They create a lot of chances. They move the ball very well. Gary O'Neill's got them playing some great football. But their finishing often leaves room to be desired. This is going to be a very interesting game for me. And I can't believe they're actually putting this one on a 3 o'clock game. Because as we've seen time and time again, when Wolves go to these games that you're not really expecting them to get much out of, they often surprise. And I'm going to go for a bit of a surprise here as well. Because... Whilst Arsenal should be the favourites, whilst the title contenders should be the ones to win this game, and let's face it, they probably will, by hook or by crook, somehow find a way to win uh, this game and get the three points. Wolves are no pushovers. Wolves are very, very good, as we've seen time and time again this season. They've already taken points off the likes of Tottenham and Manchester City so far this season. They probably should have got more in other places as well. They were very, very good uh, against Liverpool for at least 45 minutes. And had their finishing been better, it could have been a different story. Which is why I'm going to say that Wolves come out of this game with something. And I'm going for a 1-1 draw come the final whistle. From one London ground to another, we're at Brentford next for their home game against Luton Town. Brentford lost last time out to Arsenal. They're coming into this game with the luck of a defeat, a 1-0 loss to the Gunners. Whilst Luton beat Crystal Palace by two goals to one in what was an incredible victory for Luton Town. Uh, and a very good performance and result indeed for obviously the relegation battling side. Very interesting one, this one. We know that Brentford can really turn up in games like this. And we obviously know that when being at home often provides them with a bit of an extra boost from the crowd. And obviously coming against Luton, they'll certainly fancy their chances of getting back to winning ways in this game. However, Luton, no pushovers as we've seen time and time again this season. They picked up a very good win last time out. I'm intrigued about this particular game here because... Whilst Brentford, again, are the favourites, whilst they should go on and win this game, don't count out Luton getting something from this game. They have proven time and time again this season they are prepared to battle and go the distance. So I'm very intrigued to see how this one will end up. However, I've got to back the favourites in this occasion and, and on, this one, uh, on, the, on this game. So I am going to go with a Brentford win and I'm going to say the Bees come out of this one as 2-1 winners. A huge relegation six-pointer is up next at Turf Moor between Burnley and Sheffield United. Both of these sides coming into this game off the back of defeats, with Burnley losing 2-1 in that collapse against West Ham United, while Sheffield United lost 3-1 at the hands of Bournemouth. Massive game this. Massive game this. Both of these sides need to win desperately. Both of these sides need to get more points on the board. Burnley especially need something. They are winless 
in a number of games now. I can't remember the last time they actually won this season. They're only one win of the season, of course. Um, but they need to win this game. Sheffield United need to win this game. It's a massive opportunity for both of these sides. With all due respect to both of them, this is relatively a championship fixture and one that both sides should have their eye on in, in obviously using to the full advantage of obviously condemning the other relegation candidate. Sheffield United probably on paper and on form are probably the side that probably should go into this as favourites. However, Burnley, if they can get their finishing right, could go on and make it two wins so far this campaign. In saying all of that, though, I think the points will be shared. And I think neither side is going to benefit properly from a draw in this game. Which is why I'm going to say that this game will end 1-1 come the final whistle. Our Saturday afternoon viewing takes us to the half past five kickoff from the city ground where Nottingham Forest will take on Everton. Both of these sides come into this game on the back of defeats. Both of these sides come into this one wanting the three points and needing the three points. After, of course, Forest lost 3-2 to Brighton last weekend. And Everton lost 3-0 to Manchester United last Sunday. Of course, the added layer to this story is, of course, Everton's 10-point deduction. They are in desperate need of the points to, of course, uh, aid them in, of course, that particular punishment. Nottingham Forest, though, at home, are always going to be tough opposition. Always going to be um, a, a side you should give plenty of respect to. And on the counter-attack, can be pretty lethal. Interesting game, this one. It's going to be interesting to see how both sides set up. It might not be the prettiest game of football you ever see, but I think it probably could be one of the more entertaining games you could possibly see. Everton last weekend were outdone. The result, in my opinion, saw somewhat flattered Manchester United because if Everton could have sorted out their finishing, it could have been a completely different story. I'm sure Sean Dyche has had plenty of work on the training ground this week with his strikers in particular with the finishing that they displayed against Manchester United. As for Forest, they could feel a bit hard done by in their game. Some decisions never didn't necessarily go their way, but defending-wise, they need some work to be done. So there is plenty of work still to be done, plenty of improvement for both of these sides. And whilst obviously Everton might go into this one as the favourites just a little bit, I think they may have a little bit more firepower up front. You can never obviously underestimate Forrest being at home. For an Everton victory certainly seems more likely with all things considered, but with Forrest being at home, I'm going to say that they're going to take something from this game, and that's why I am going for a 2-2 draw come the final whistle. Saturday evening, 8 o'clock, your kickoff time. It is at St. James's Park for Newcastle against Manchester United. A huge Premier League encounter between these two. You've got Newcastle coming into this game off the back of a victory last weekend against Chelsea. 4-1 to the Magpies at finish in bizarre and incredible circumstances for Eddie Howe's side in what was a brilliant victory for them. Manchester United also coming into this game off the back of a win with a 3-0 victory under Everton under their belts as they are still the most informed side in recent games in the Premier League. Interesting game. But Newcastle at home, you can never take it for granted. And I know last week I predicted Chelsea to get a victory over, over Newcastle. But that was due to the number of injuries that I saw Newcastle have. I thought Chelsea could take advantage going into that game off the back of obviously beating Spurs. Again, in bizarre circumstances, but they still beat Spurs. And then, of course, drawing to Man City in the fashion and the way that they did. I thought Chelsea could maybe take advantage of a Newcastle side that were a little down on their luck. And a little down in terms of players and fitness as well as obviously the injury concerns that they had. Against Manchester United though, I take it all back. I would hold my hands up and say I was wrong for Newcastle. United come into this game in some good form, but I think against a well-drilled, well, uh, more prepared Newcastle side, 
I'm going to say, and after, of course, difficult trips in midweek for both of these sides in terms of their Champions League efforts as well, I'm going to say Newcastle win. I'm going to say Newcastle win. They get the job done at St. James's Park. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff for some reason. No idea why it's an 8 o'clock kickoff. Um, but at the same time, that's just what obviously has happened with the broadcasters and everything. It's weird. 8 o'clock kickoff, Saturday evening, Newcastle Man United. I am going for a Newcastle win, and I'm going to say it ends 2 1 to Eddie Howe's side. Moving on to Sunday's games, and first up, we've got a clash between Bournemouth and Aston Villa to contend with. Both of these sides coming into this game off the back of victories, of course, with Bournemouth winning 3 1 against Sheffield United, and Aston Villa fighting back to win 2 1 against Tottenham. Big game this one, you've got an Unai Emery side who aren't exactly the best away from home, but that win against Tottenham may have given them the boost that they need. Uh, they're coming to this game in the top four, they come into this game in fine form, and I've got to say that although Bournemouth are slowly starting to seemingly click in recent games, and are slowly starting to pick, uh, piece together some sort of level of performances and results, I've got to go with Aston Villa. I've got to go with the form side on this one. And I've got to go with the likes of Ollie Watkins in particular, who is in fine form right now. And say that Aston Villa come out of this game with a win, the three points. And I'm going to say the clean sheet as well. Because I'm going for a 2-0 victory in favour of Unai Emery's side. Next up, Stamford Bridge awaits Chelsea against Brighton. What a game we have on our hands here. We've got Chelsea side coming in this game off the back of a 4-1 humiliation at the hands of Newcastle. Wanting to get back to winning ways, needing to get back to winning ways and needing to get points on the board against the Brighton side who were 3-2 winners against Nottingham Forest last time out and are looking to redeem themselves after what has been a quite inconsistent and awkward start to the season. In terms of this game, look, Chelsea, you never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get this season and it will be very easy to predict uh, Chelsea to get to get beaten in this game because of the way Brighton play. You've also got to look at the injuries and the suspensions Brighton have and say that maybe Chelsea could take advantage. But we said that last weekend about, again, about Newcastle and look how that ended. It's going to be an awkward game. I still think it's going to be a very fast and entertaining game between these two as it normally tends to be. And Brighton have been a big thorn in Chelsea's side in recent times. So, with that being said, history and everything does point towards a Brighton win. Chelsea, like I say, you never know which Chelsea side is going to turn up. Often when you think Chelsea are going to get beaten this season, they often manage to pull out a performance right out of the blue and often get something from the game. They did so against Liverpool, they did so against Nuke, uh, sorry, not Newcastle, uh, against um, Arsenal, against Man City against Tottenham so it's going to be very interesting to watch this game unfold before our very eyes I'm struggling on this one because this one genuinely could go any which way but if I had to stick my neck out on the line I've got to go with in my in, in who my opinion are the favourites and I've got to say Brighton so I want to go with a 2-1 victory in favour of the Seagulls our next game of focus comes from Anfield as Liverpool host Fulham. Massive game this one. Liverpool side coming into this game off the back of a 1-1 draw with Pep Guardiola's Manchester City last time out. And what was a huge and big away point for the Reds in that game. Whilst Fulham picked up a much needed victory, a much wanted victory in their last game against Wolves. In which was a five goal thriller in which Fulham just edged it by three goals to two. A much needed win there in what was albeit rather controversial circumstances. Look, it's a home game for Liverpool so they automatically go in as the favourites. They should be winning this game anyway against a Fulham side who struggled to score goals. And a, a Fulham side who can be awkward on their day. But their day hasn't really been as frequent this season as it has been uh, in previous months gone by. Liverpool should win this game and I never take anything for granted and I never want to say that this is a foregone conclusion. But Liverpool have to be cautious. If they go into this game like they did against Luton or like they did against Toulouse in the Europa League and think that this game is going to be um, won before a ball is even kicked, 
that is where Liverpool tend to slip up. The mentality and the um, the mental side of the game shifts, and that's where Fulham can potentially take advantage. If Fulham are strong, defensively resolute, and they are um, very decisive and very quick on the counter attack. They can obviously get something from this game. And it's going to be interesting to see on the Liverpool side of things. If the likes of Diego Jota and Alisson Becker. Um, the fitness levels of them. And obviously the extent of their injuries as well. So it's going to be very interesting. And again, maybe that choice of goalkeeper in Cayman Kelleher. Can maybe work in Fulham's favour. Particularly from set pieces. Maybe they will look to take advantage of that. However, I cannot look past Liverpool in, in a prediction like this. So I'm going to go with a 3-1 victory in favour of Jurgen Klopp's side. Fingers crossed that goes well with both Mohamed Salah and Darwin Nunes both on the score sheet. Next up a London derby of sorts between West Ham United and Crystal Palace. London Stadium awaits these two to battle it out for three points for your Sunday afternoon viewing. West Ham, of course, come into this game off the back of a 2-1 victory at the hands and the expense of Burnley, whilst Palace hit a bit of a slippery slope in recent times, with their latest performance being a defeat at the hands of Luton Town, in which was another 2-1 defeat for them. It's a big game. It's a big game for both of these sides. Roy Hodgson's side will obviously want to get back to winning ways. David Moyes' side will want to continue to progress, continue to try and build up. Of course, the extra bonus of Europa League action for West Ham may play its part in the outcome of this fixture. Maybe the extra running in the legs, the extra 90 minutes in the legs of some of those West Ham players may um, benefit Crystal Palace somewhat. But then again, some teams maybe can benefit from playing two games a week. And obviously, West Ham have certainly been doing that in recent times. So... We'll wait and see, obviously, how this game come, um, goes about. We know that, obviously, Palace do have the types of players to, of course, hurt West Ham. But between these two counter-attacking sides, um, with interesting and exciting players in certain aspects, in certain respects on show, in certain places and positions, it's going to be very interesting to see how this game will pan out. West Ham going to this game as the favourites. They are the home side as well, so that might give them the extra edge as well. And that's where my prediction is going to lie. I've got to say that although Palace have the potential and always seemingly have this air about them that when you back against Palace, they often do surprise you and they often do get something from the game. I've got to go with the favourites on this one. So I've got to go with a West Ham win. I'm going to say that this game ends 2-1 to David Moyes' side. And finally, in what I believe to be the biggest game of this round of fixtures, the main event of this Premier League weekend. It comes from the Etihad. It is Manchester City taking on Tottenham. A huge game in prospect for both of these sides. You've got a Manchester City side that will be chasing Arsenal at the top of the table and will be look, hopefully looking for Arsenal to slip up this weekend whilst taking advantage themselves against this Tottenham side. City obviously come into this game off the back of a couple of draws in recent times. So they've not actually won in the past couple of games with their latest draw being a 1-1 draw with Liverpool. Whilst, of course, Tottenham come into this game off the back of three defeats in a row. Their latest being a 2-1 defeat at the hands of Aston Villa. Massive game between these two and it's going to be a big, big test for both of these two managers. Pep Guardiola obviously wants to get back to winning ways. Pep Guardiola also wants to be looking to hunt down Arsenal every step of the way. And you've got a Tottenham side who are coming into this game with Ange Postacoglu, who it'll be interesting to see how he, how he lines up and how he, go, how he goes about his business in this game. He's already made clear of that uh, his attacking intent will never change or never change completely. So it will be very interesting to see how he sets up because if he sets up with a high line against this Manchester City side with the likes of Jeremy Doku and Erling Haaland in their ranks, City will feast on goals. No doubt about it. And, the, and this Tottenham back line doesn't fill me with any hope whatsoever that Tottenham can get a result in this game. I'd love to say that Tottenham get a result in this game. I'd love to say that City drop points in this game. But I don't think I'll be able to because a back line that features the likes of Pedro Porro, Emerson Royale, B 
Ben Davies, the potential of Eric Dyer, for example, against the likes of Julian uh, Julian Alvarez, Erling Haaland, Jeremy Doku, Phil Foden. It's a nonsense to me. It's a foregone conclusion. Like, that defence does not fill me with any confidence. And if he's going to say, go and play that high line that I want you to play, this could be a very interesting and entertaining game, to say the least. This could be a very end-to-end -end sort of game. But in this end-to-end -end game, there's only going to be one winner. And that's going to be City, because they have the more clinical finishers. I think City, uh, I think Tottenham will score. I have no doubt Tottenham will score because they have the potential to do it, they have the ability to do it, they have the forward thinking attacking intent to do it, and Hyungman's son on his day is lethal. However, I don't trust their defence one bit. I think they've got a solid goalkeeper and he's exceeded my expectations of him this season. But if you're playing that high line and you've got Jeremy Doku running one way, you've got Phil Foden running another way, you've got maybe the return of Jack Grealish potentially come, cutting inside, you've got the um, you've got Je Julian Alvarez on the other side running one way, you've got the attacking intent of Kyle Walker going on the outside, you've then got Erling freaking Haaland who is in lethal form, who is bagging goals for fun, who is the fastest player in Premier League history to get to 50. That's curtains as far as what I'm concerned. That is curtains as far as what I'm concerned. And if obviously Anish doesn't change his approach, if he doesn't maybe drop back a few more yards, if he doesn't go with a more cautious approach, it's going to be a massacre in my opinion. Uh, as far as what Tottenham are concerned. So that is why, with all things considered, and I'm open to, to be 100% completely wrong about this, I do not want this to happen. I want City to drop points. I've got to go with a City win. I want them to drop points, but I've got to go with a City win because everything that I've said seems to be leading towards that a City win. And whilst I'm hoping that I'm wrong, and I'm hoping that Tottenham pull a rabbit out of the hat and... They managed to somehow, some way, some form, get something from this game. I've got to go with a City win. And that is why I'm going to go for a 4-2 win. 4-2 win. 4-1. 4-2. 4-2 win. I'm going to go 4-2 win for City. Let's go goals galore on this. And there you have it. Those are my thoughts, comments, opinions, but most of all, of course, my predictions on each and every single game coming up in this Premier League weekend. I want to know what your thoughts, comments, opinions, and of course, mainly your predictions are though. So do leave them in the comment section below. Would love to hear from you all on what is set to be another exciting weekend of Premier League action waiting to unfold. Cannot wait for, the, for this weekend to come around in terms of the Premier League action we're going to be witnessing. But as always, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both of those things were always and forever greatly appreciated. And of course, thank you all for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. Uh, sorry, Premier League predictions video, should I say. Until next time, I'll see and speak with you all again soon in another video. Take care. See and speak with you soon.